Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, the SP Developer Meetup. So we're going to wait a few seconds until everybody's get in. And today's meetup is about uh, Aruba Networking Central Automation with uh, Alvin and Kartik. Um, so let's get started. Before, before I hand over to uh, uh, Alvin and Kartik, uh, uh, let me present myself. I'm Mathieu uh, from the HP Developer Community, so working with uh, Denis, Didier, and uh, Frédéric. And um, what I would like to uh, give you as an update is the uh, incoming uh, webinar we plan to have during March. So um, Munch and Learn, that's going to follow a series of around the intelligence, artific uh, artificial intelligence and how uh, to secure and prevent uh, uh, hacking uh, on model resilience. So that's going to be a, quite an interesting one. It's going to be provided also by the Hewlett Packard Labs. Um, following this, we plan also to have meetups. So we already talked about uh, this incoming meetup uh, uh, on the previous webinar. As a developer community, we're going to uh, uh, um, use that uh, meetup slot in order for us to present um, what the, the GreenEgg platform uh, is um, providing in terms of uh, uh, automation and uh, integration and developer uh, toolkit. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll try to use that. That's what so I really encourage you to... Uh, to apply for, for this webinar that's going to be on, on March uh, the 27th. And uh, for April, we already uh, planned a session with uh, the um, Data Service Cloud Console, so the, the storage uh, piece for uh, Green Egg. So that's going to be presented by uh, Ron uh, and uh, Edgar. This gonna be, uh, yeah, we're gonna have some updates and uh, but especially uh, I know on uh, backup and recovery in example and, and much more. Um, so in terms of um, other housekeeping item, we, we've got, as you may know, the, the workshop on demand program where uh, uh, based on uh, Jupyter Notebook, we offer a numerous of uh, workshop uh, around how to uh, get started or to uh, start working with the uh, developer uh, toolkit we could have can be uh, the yeah it's mostly the the full landscape of HP product but also technologies such as uh, Kubernetes you have a one-on-one -on -one Kubernetes and so on so uh, don't hesitate to show up there we have uh, mostly a GLP so GreenLake uh, Cloud Platform um, API uh, workshop on demand ready. So yeah, uh, keep uh, we will we'll keep you uh, posted about this one as soon as available. And in that area, uh, the, the easiest way yeah, is to uh, to follow us on uh, uh, can be uh, on the Slack, uh, can be uh, on the newsletter. So uh, Denis and Frederick will uh, post the information on how to, um, uh, to join the community on the Q&A section. Um, and uh, if you are uh, an SME and you have uh, something ready for, for uh, uh, a blog post or something, yeah, don't hesitate to, uh, to come back to us and, and, uh, and to propose a um, post. So um, that's say, so the, we have yeah a summary of the, the way to reach out to us. Uh, obviously, we have that, uh, that um, HP's uh, Slack, uh, HP Dev Slack uh, workspace. So uh, you'll find in the Q&A section also the, the, the way to register to that uh, workspace, and numerous of channels, including uh, Aruba networking. Uh, which um, 
uh, we host. So uh, if you have questions, feedback, you can uh, easily interact with uh, with us on, on that. You have the monthly uh, newsletter. You can register. You can always reach out to us uh, via the mail uh, hp at hp.com. So um, I think that's uh, it for the for the uh, And let's may uh, yeah let's get started uh, with uh, the meetup of today, which is uh, getting started with our urban networking central automation. So Alvin, Kathik, uh, floor is yours. So, hello, my name is Alvin Castro, and I'm the Technical Marketing Engineer Manager for Automation on the HP Aruba Networking Division. So I am joined here with Karthik Satish Kumar, a TME that is one of our leading automation experts with Central, which we'll be talking about here today. So we're here to help you to get started with HP Aruba Networking Central Automation. This is the high-level agenda we have going over. And we'll start first by discussing automation with HP Aruba Networking in general. Then we'll discuss the ways that you can perform central automation and show you how you can get through started or get started through some of the demos that we have available. Um, we'll end the session with uh, additional resources similar to some of the links that Matthew had showed. And then if we have some time, we'll go over some of the live Q&A that you have. So uh, during this time, if you do have questions, uh, feel free to use the Q&A panel option and we'll try to answer them either during or after the webinar. Uh, depending on how much time we have. So go ahead and pop those in there whenever you have them. So intro to HP Aruba Networking Automation. When you hear the term network automation, uh, that can mean a couple of different things. Uh, the, a baseline definition is that network automation uses software, scripts, and tools to streamline network tasks. Uh, goals of using network automation include increasing agility um, simplifying these tasks and processes and reducing human-induced errors, things along the lines of, you know, a misspell or a fat finger here or there uh, can all be, you know, removed or reduced by utilizing automation to streamline that, right? So some of, some use of this in, in the context of uh, turnkey solutions with UIs, uh, such as network management systems, such as Central, which we'll be showing today, uh, the Riba Fabric Composer, or um, integration with ticketing service management systems like ServiceNow, uh, a lot of people can, can summarize these tools as automation. But on the other side, we also talk about the context of uh, programmability. That's, that's what we'll be talking about today, the programmability of our HP Everybody Networking products um, and devices and applications, right? So this means the use of APIs, web hooks, uh, and programming languages and tools like that to help make things easier for, for you guys. And so <clears throat> for many interested in network automation, the most common use cases can fit sort of in, in three different categories uh, based off of when they're utilizing this automation. So, uh, for instance, day zero automation is often designed for design and planning out the network. Um, this could involve tools to, to plan your network automation, uh, getting prepped and, and pre-configuration steps for your devices. Um, day one can be seen as the deployment of the network, the onboarding and device management. Um, and that allows you for that connectivity for the day two or day N aspect where it involves various degrees of network maintenance and conformance, uh, monitoring the network overall and, and checking for any type of anomalies um, and reacting to them utilizing event-driven automation. And so here's a subset list of some of the most common network automation workflows that a lot of our, you know, a lot of different customers such as yourself um, have come to us for. Um, and these include utilizing integrations with other systems and in-house tools that you might already have, um, utilizing a CICD integration, like a continuous integration, continuous deployment, uh, we have different demos and such that we can deep dive into that uh, in, in other sessions or, or if you check out some of our uh, other resources, we have that there. Uh, provisioning and zero touch provisioning, that's, that's something that a lot of our customers like to make use in their own, in their own way. Um, and making sure that just in general, the network is running smoothly with um, compliance checks, validations, and things along those lines. Or in the event that things 
are, are don't run as smoothly and you run into things that are a little bit anomalous, users want their automation to automatically remediate these, these issues, report when it happens, um, and utilize, like I mentioned, that event-driven automation to make sure that the automation kind of takes care of a lot of that work for you. Uh, so that's a lot of opportunities for networks to be improved by automation. And it will require your, your network infrastructure to allow for programmable interfaces with your network management systems and devices. And so here at HPE Aruba Networking, we have the strategy of our edge service platform. That means all levels of <clears throat> our hardware and software allow for programmable interfaces to, to interact and connect with each other um, and other multi-vendor tools and solutions. So it's not just a matter of like we, we play well with ourselves, we, we make these open APIs available so that um, your tools and, and third-party multi-vendor solutions also work. So from all the way down from our APs and switches, like the AOSCF switch that we have there, to our policy, uh, like our ClearPass policy manager, and all the varying levels of AI ops that Central provides, such as that onboarding provision and orchestration and such, right? All of these applications and devices have an API interface to handle the programmable interactions to and from, right? And so that's what is one of the great benefits that we have here today with our products. And we'll be showing you these uh, live in a demo to help you get started. So not only can Aruba Central help perform those top level actions on the AI ops um, with a GUI, but we'll show you how to make API calls to Central to perform such operations in a programmatic way. So if you have a multi-vendor solution, if you have an in-house tool that you like using as, as your viewpoint, um, you can make calls to Central to kind of handle that from a programmatic way instead of having to view the, the GUI and such. So a lot of different options and we wanna make that available to you, right? And so <clears throat> across the Pan Aruba Edge Services platform uh, that we've seen, my team helps manage and develop several different automation tools, frameworks and integrations with our wired and wireless products. And so here are different, a uh, couple different tools and frameworks that we have. Python is a high level, programming language that is used widely across various disciplines and industries. Um, it's highly regarded for its simplified syntax, uh, beginner friendliness, actually each version, it does seem to get more and more beginner friendly, which is, which is great, um, and abundance of third-party libraries. Uh, Python is among the most popular programming languages in the world, especially in the network automation space. And the networking community especially embraces Python due in no small part to the extensive vendor supports, as well as low barrier of entry of getting started with the automation and scripting. And so we utilize Python as a base for a lot of our automation frameworks across the board, uh, such as with Ansible. So Ansible is an open source automation framework that was created by Ansible and now maintained by Red Hat. Um, Ansible is an orchestration tool that automates provisioning, deployment, configuration management. Um, and so that is powered by Python. And so when we, we develop and create Ansible collections utilizing Py our Python SDKs as a base for that. Postman is an API platform that can help with making REST requests and handling uh, responses to really simplify the, that procedure. And that's uh, what you'll be seeing today because we'll be unveiling our new central Postman collection in the demo that Karthik will be showing later. A couple other frameworks and tools that we have um, support for for some of our, our products is uh, Napalm. It's a network automation and programmability abstraction there with multi-vendor support. Uh, it's, it's essentially a Python library that implements a set of functions to interact with different router and, and um, switch vendor devices using a unified API. And so we have that with our switching um, as, as a community driver. And Terraform. Uh, Terraform is widely used in large enterprise infrastructures to, to help manage automation with their cloud systems. This is a stateful automation tool that is starting to pick up more and more in the networking space. Now, from a central perspective, we currently support the Python, an Ansible collection, as well as the Postman automation tools and frameworks uh, today. So, so we'll show you uh, what, what we have in some of our Postman unveiling. And uh, we're, we're constantly expanding and creating more support uh, based off of you know, your use cases, your requests and things along those lines. So uh, definitely keep in touch with us and, and 
um, let us know. And you know, that's how we develop our, our roadmap as well. So let's talk more about central automation because uh, that's what we have here for uh, today. And we have a lot of great demos that, that we have in store for you. Uh, first, for those that are new to Central, not only does it have an amazing UI, but there are you know, multiple different ways that you can actually interact with Central from a, a programmatic sense, right? So first, I keep talking about our APIs. So our REST APIs, uh, for those that are, are just getting started, it's a request reply style interface. So you make a request to Central, it will reply with a response. And with the REST uh, calls, you're able to monitor, configure, and troubleshoot on Central via these APIs. Um, now, currently with, with the Central, we have more than 50 API categories corresponding to the different functions and features. Central can do a lot of amazing things. And so uh, they're categorized for the REST calls to be able to do that. And so we have these endpoints available for those for that capability. Um, in addition to the REST calls, you can also uh, connect with webhooks. So webhooks are used to deliver like real-time information or notifications across platforms. It's especially useful for event-driven automation and, and integrations with third-party applications. Uh, many, many applications such as uh, Slack and such have you, make use of webhooks or, or ticketing system um, that I mentioned earlier. So when an alert or event occurs on Central, the webhook would then uh, basically message those that, that are subscribed to it or push those messages to those that are subscribed to it. And that then triggers the automation from, from those tools as well. Now, these can be configured uh, based on the alerts available in Central. And so that's that's where uh, webhooks can, can be very useful. And also with Central, you can make use of streaming APIs. This is another uh, push type of model. It's, it's a more of a publish and subscribe model where you can stream data based off of network state and statistics and provide that readable info. Um, and so a lot of our customers use it for their own custom dashboards, their own in-house tools. This is how they can kind of gather that data from Central. And uh, we have topics available based on sort of like the categories that I mentioned with REST, topics around monitoring, um, audit, location, presence, um, security, and FRF. So a lot of different categories and, and views that you can have to make their customized dashboards. If you've seen us uh, in, in some of our demonstrations on site at Atmosphere and, and Discover in the past, often we utilize these customized dashboards uh, such as with Grafana and such that make use of these streaming APIs to, to really show what, what you might want in your own view pane. So we have a lot of demos to go over this. Um, for now, I'll pass it over to Karthik to go over uh, a lot more about these REST capabilities leading into some of those demos. Karthik, I'll hand it off to you. Thank you, Alvin. Um, I'm going to share my screen right now. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks like you'll have to stop sharing so that I can oh, share. You got it. Let me know when my screen is visible. Yep. Looks great. Awesome. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Karthik Satish Kumar. And as I mentioned, I'm a TME. I work with automation and with specifically MSPs in HP Urban Networking. So today I want to uh, dive into and focus into REST APIs, right? And as, as Alan mentioned, this is the most popular API type uh, at the customers. They like that request reply style interface. And it's a cornerstone for a lot of automation workflows. So with Aruba Central, we provide you with different, and the automation team, we provide you with different tools that you can utilize um, in your journey uh, as you get to know these different REST APIs. So we have the Urban Central Swagger interface, which is available within the central application. We have the API reference section in our Aruba Dev Hub. We have uh, the Postman collection, which we are recently just launched it. And we have uh, uh, various automation SDKs uh, like PyCentral or the Central Ansible collection. Each of these tools uh, provide their own advantages. And we'll take a look, a closer look at them in the next couple of slides. So first, uh, we have the Urban Central Swagger. This is usually the first place uh, that our customers, you know, test out the API calls, 
um, especially since the Swagger page is available within the central application, which makes it extremely convenient. Uh, within the central app, you can generate your access tokens, um, and then head to the Swagger, and you know you can make API calls. All of this can be done without having to leave the app. Uh, the Swagger uh, within the Swagger, you have a comprehensive list of all the APIs available for the central account that you're on. It also has uh, details, uh, API details like the required parameters, uh, the expected responses, details on what each parameter of the response body corresponds to. Etc. So it's an invaluable tool, especially uh, to test out the API features. Next, uh, we have um, the uh, Aruba Dev Hub API reference guide, and this is located within the Aruba Dev Hub. Uh, for those of you who may not be familiar, the Dev Hub is the developer resource that the automation team in Aruba has developed for HP Aruba products. Uh, it features uh, the get, uh, getting started section, guides, uh, automation guides, API references, and a code exchange. So uh, similar to the Swagger, uh, within the API reference section, you can see um, documentation for all the supported APIs. You can see uh, details on required parameters, expect responses, very similar to the Swagger. But additionally, you have the ability to make API calls from the API reference page on DevHub, right? So you don't have to log in to the uh, Aruba Central application. So as long as you have a valid access token from Central and you've selected uh, you know, the base URL uh, for your account, you should be able to make API calls to um, Aruba Central. So let's actually take a look at the two platforms we talked about, uh, tools we talked about. So that is the Swagger and the API reference guide. So here I am on my uh, Aruba Central account. Uh, this is the homepage. And I will head to the platform integration tab where we have the API gateway. So here we have um, the REST API section. So clicking on this would open the Swagger interface. Here you can see uh, the app apps that are available, uh, the tokens that are available for my user and list. Clicking on download would open the actual access token and you can use that uh, before making API calls. I can go to your system app and token see. Um, so I'm an admin user, so I'm able to see this page, uh, which has uh, apps and tokens for uh, users, uh, manage that. And you can also track the usage of APIs in this account. So I have actually already uh, opened the Swagger in this page. So this is the Swagger section. So we can see the different API categories that Alvin talked about. So we have around more than 50 API categories, and each of them correspond to a particular feature. So here, um, so what you need to provide here is the access token, which I actually already copied in. And what I'm going to do now is I'll make a simple get call, right? So these calls are quite easy to make. So I'm seeing, uh, I can see the, what is the API method, the API URL documentation, what this API will do. Um, I'm seeing what are the different parameters that I can provide with this API and also what the response schema would look like. So with that, I will make this API call. So this, as you can see, I've now got the response back. So I'm seeing the request URL that, that we used, um, the response body, right? So I have three sites it mentions. I have brew fresh, um, coffee drip, some uh, coffee shine, a lot of coffee shops that basically that are available within this account. I see uh, the response code and um, yeah, also the response headers. And we can also verify these details um, by going to the UI, right? We have these three, brew fresh, coffee drip, and coffee shine. So all the details that you can get from the UI, you're also able to get uh, details like this with the help of APIs in the Swagger. Now, uh, the within the Aruba Dev Hub, as I talked about, we have the, uh, so this is the Aruba Dev Hub. So here you can click, we have the getting started section. We have an APIs and guide section for our different products. Uh, we have the code exchange. So I'll just quickly go to the uh, Get Started page, and here we can go to the Aruba Central tab. I will actually also open the guide, so just to quickly show you what we have here, and also the API reference guide. So within the guide, we have several guides that have, uh, are geared for automations for things like REST APIs, getting started with the REST API, documentation around that, webhooks, streaming APIs, right? the different uh, automation interface in Central and documentation around different automation SDKs like Ansible and Python. 
And we also have some specific MSP mode in Aruba Central. So we have some specific automation around that. So we have some content uh, API aut aut um, automation documentation around that in this guide section. And this is the API reference page, right? So very similar to the Swagger, uh, we have see the different categories, right? It's all scrollable and you can select on it. So like the get all audits um, API endpoint, we can see uh, again, details of the, what the API and uh, what the API does. Uh, we see details of the query parameters and uh, other details. So uh, we'll make the same list sites API call. So what I'll do here is um, I've already provided the access token. Uh, the next thing that I would do is select the base URL. So um, just to circle back, a base URL is actually based on the uh, cluster in which your central account is registered in. So one difference is when you're using the Swagger, the base URL is already provided, right? It's automatically there, so you don't have to worry about that. You just have to provide the access token. But when you're using uh, it from the dev hub, since this is not in the application, you need to specify the base URL and also provide the access token. So I will, uh, my account is in the US West cluster, so I will select that the URL gets populated here and then I'll hit on try it now. So we should see a response. Uh, so while the response is loading, we can also check um, the other like uh, details of the query parameters and things like that. Um, what each parameter we have like a definition for that and what type of parameters available. So we just got we got the response. So very similar, exact same response that we got at the Swagger. We are getting it here too. We are able to see the three sites, the refresh, uh, you know, coffee drip and coffee shine. So the three uh, uh, sites that we have in the account, we're getting the same details. Additionally, you have the ability to copy this um, response and, you know, uh, do any kind of text manipulation, and, you know, um, utilize that response. And also the, you can also see the headers uh, that you get with this response. So this is uh, two of the tools that we have uh, with uh, Aruba Central that you can utilize um, as you're getting started with REST API. Perfect. And, yeah, I figured we would yeah. answer this live. Um, mm -hmm. There's a question about the access token. Like, how long is it valid? And do you use the refresh token to obtain the access token? Oh, that's a great question. So, uh, so to get the access token, we in Aruba Central, we have two ways to get the access token. So I can actually show you uh, one of the ways very quickly right now. So if I uh, go to the My Apps and Tokens, I already have one, but I can click on Add App uh, app and Token. That will generate a new access token for me. And the access token uh, is valid for two hours. Uh, so uh, so uh, this, so when I click on Download Token, you would get actually a JSON response, which has the access and refresh token, right? So once the access token that you got has expired, you can utilize that uh, refresh token you got make the refresh token API. Let me quickly show you that API we have here. Uh, refresh token, refresh API token. Um, and so here you provide that refresh token you got, the client ID, client secret. So that's specific to the user. You can get it from here. You put those in here and you can get a new access token refresh, uh, access and refresh token pair. So that's the way you can basically uh, utilize and you know get an access token through the UI. We also have OAuth APIs that you can leverage, and but that's specific for uh, non-SSO users uh, to generate an access token. Hopefully that answered the question. Yeah, great, thank you. All right. Uh, all right, uh, going going to our next tool that we have. So as Alan mentioned, uh, Postman is the newest tool that um, our team has uh, you know uh, integrated with essentially. So. Uh, Postman is extremely popular for API development and testing. Already, a lot of our customers are using Postman, you know, in their uh, own environments uh, to integrate with different tools that they have. So we've published a Postman collection and an environment for Aruba Central. So, uh, so what I mean is a Postman collection uh, basically enables you to group your API requests and relevant documentation. So this makes it very easy to browse and test these APIs within Postman. And that it kind of functions very similar to how you saw the APIs in Swagger and DevHub, the reference guide. And the Postman environment I talked about is basically a group of variables. Um, so those are values that you can change and you can set the environment before making calls with the collections. But the, uh, the environment acts as a nice, uh, uh, 
kind of a way to group your uh, tokens, base URL access tokens, things like that. And you can set those before making your API calls. So those are some of the capabilities that we have today. And we also are uh, utilizing the Postman runner capability. So what is Postman runner? It's basically a feature within Postman that enables you to script multiple API calls together. So we have provided the OAuth API method, the, the method that I talk, just talked about to generate an access token. Again, this is a method that's available for non-SSO users only. So they can use uh, these OAuth APIs to generate an access token. So the OAuth APIs uh, require you to make three sequential API calls, right, one after the other, and each API will provide you something in the response. You need to utilize that in the next API call. So there is some details required. So, but with Postman Runner, the whole process is simplified. You just have to pick a button and as long as you provided all the required variables in the valid Postman environment, you can, you know, uh, get the uh, uh, access token generated. So with that, um, we'll take a look at the Postman uh, Postman that we have. Postman. Uh, so here I have my Postman account, and what I can, uh, I'm heading to the Aruba Central collection within Postman. And here you can see a quick overview documentation around what Postman is. We can open and see the different API categories uh, that we have. And this kind of, uh, and then we have the overview here, uh, the base URL and the access token, right? So uh, details on how you can obtain those, that's available here. And you can open any of the categories, right? In this case, we're opening the audit category and see it's basically uh, the similar to the Swagger interface that we saw. But the one thing is, this is the Postman version. So, uh, this is the collection within Postman. So uh, you cannot test the API calls. You need to fork it and make a local copy before you can do that. So I actually already done this in my environment and the uh, in my uh, Postman account. And the other is the Postman environment I talked about, where it's all these values that you need to populate before you make these a API calls. So now I'm heading to my workspace where I've cloned the environment and the collection. So here. Within the, uh, you can see it's an exact ditto copy of what we just saw, because it's basically a clone of what you saw. But this is your environment, so you can edit, make changes, and also make the API calls from here, right? Uh, so, and you can see it's forked from the Aruba Central. And you know, basically, when I'm when the Aruba Central collection gets updated, you can also get a notification letting you know, hey, you can update your collection. So whenever whenever there are changes to APIs, this really helps. So now we have the. Uh, environment and we need to update and provide it with the base URL and access token. So both of those values I have provided here right now. And so now that means is we can make our API calls. So we'll again make the same API call that we have been making, which is the list sites. So you'll see the same documentation and clicking on send should generate uh, the uh, list of sites. So, and as you can see on the top right uh, corner, um, you have the environment set as Aruba Central and, and ENB, which is the environment where we provided the base URL and access token. So here we can see uh, the sites, right? The three sites that we were looking at, we are getting the same responses. So as you can see, it's just another uh, post, this provides another way for you to you know test out uh, the uh, REST APIs. So I have a second environment here, basically, but in this environment, what I'm doing is um, I want to showcase the Postman runner capability. So here, if you notice, I have the access token and refresh token uh, variables empty, but I have provided values for the username, password, client ID, client secret, and the customer ID. So I'm providing these values, um, but this, this environment does not have a valid access token. So I'm setting that as a new environment here, right? So now, um, and then we have the uh, create token for non so users, we can um, run this Postman runner to make uh, create the access token. So before we do that, let's actually also just make sure that the environment, like, um, so I'm set a new environment here, which does not have an access token. So let's try and make an API call just to make sure that we don't have an access token. We do, because in this environment, we don't have an access token. So we are seeing a 401, which showcases that this environment does not have a valid access token. So let's head to the create token folder. So here we are uh, specifying the, like the details of what's happening with the OAuth APIs. We pro uh, I'm also in the documentation, we have 
what are the required variables? Uh, so we have the base URL, username, password, client ID, a client secret, and customer ID. So these are the required parameters for this runner to work. So you need to have these values updated and valid in your envi Postman environment before you start this runner, all right? So that's all documented here. And then automatically your, you know, um, access token, refresh token would be saved after execution. So this is what I mentioned about the click of a button here. So basically we are, uh, you know, starting this Postman runner and here the, there are three steps, which is showing us the run order and things like that. And clicking on run would basically start the three API calls. And we have the console, which is printing out the responses for each of the steps, right? So uh, there are different things that are being fetched. Like in the first step, we are getting session tokens and CSR tokens. Those are saved in the environment because these tokens can be used later on if you want to delete the access token. In the second step, we are ex utilizing the session and CSR tokens to obtain an auth code that is stored in the environment. Then we're using the auth, uh, exchanging the auth code to fetch the actual access and refresh token pair. And we also uh, be deleting the auth code because that's not needed anymore. But doing all this basically ensures that the access tokens are saved. We go to the, if you go to the environment now, we have a access token and refresh token now available. And so what that means is with this new environment, we can now you know go to the old API, which we're trying to do, which is the list sites API. We can go there and uh, try the API call. So last time we got a 401. So without changing the environment, we just created the new token. And we should have um, you know valid response. So there you go. So we are able to generate access token without having to go to central or do any of those things. We are able to do it just with the help of OAuth APIs and the process of using the OAuth APIs has been simplified, you know, with the help of the Postman runner. So, so you can now head to, uh, you can utilize uh, the Europe Central Collection, you know, to um, use this with that. Oh, it does look, give me one second. All right, so, Sorry, the video just started playing again. All right, so uh, finally we have our automation SDKs. So the three tools that we uh, looked at earlier today, right, the Swagger, the API reference, Postman collections, primarily uh, most of them are used just for testing or you know just a simpler workflows, but for the more complicated workflows, but for a more advanced customers, advanced automation customers, they prefer to use an automation script. And as Alan mentioned, uh, Python and, and Ansible are two of the most popular uh, uh, programming languages when it comes to network automation. And it, at a, for Arupa Central, we have developed SDKs for both these languages. We have the PyCentral Python library for um, Python, Python library, and we have the uh, Arupa Central collection for Ansible. So these SDKs uh, simplify the code that uh, the automation users have to write in their script to make the API calls. We have uh, specific modules for API categories that simplifies um, simplifies their workflows to while uh, making their automation scripts. So with respect to the uh, Ansible collection, uh, we have updated the Ansible uh, from roles to collections, and this has been published. It's available in this uh, link that we have here. And so we have a collection of Aruba Central specific modules um, to build the playbooks for automation tasks. Um, and that this helps you make API calls uh, so to Aruba Central with REST. Um, and one advantage that we have these collections is they're better integrated with the Ansible's automation platform and the new version of Ansible and AWX. And we are continuing to develop this uh, collection and create more uh, newer playbooks based on our PyCentral SDK. Talking about the PyCentral SDK, uh, we had uh, launched the PyCentral uh, beta version in 2021 and released the V1 of this in August, 2023. Um, this is again a Python library. It simplifies um, the steps uh, to you know, start making API calls to Central in Python. So we have also added some features to PyCentral. So we have the automatic token generation management. So basically the OAuth steps that we saw with the Postman runner that's automatically included as part of PyCentral. So let's say you're running a, a PyCentral script and you, uh, your token is expired. This, the library has the ability to automatically go to Central and make those OAuth calls and generate a new access token for you. Or let's say your token is expired 
uh, and you have a valid refresh token, it can refresh that token for you and continue executing. We have implemented some wait and retry logics when uh, you know your script has hit the per second API rate limit of central. We also have developed uh, base modules for you to make API calls to any of the API categories. And for some of the most popular uh, API categories, we have come up with modules that really help you with your scripting. So we are, you can see some of the uh, modules that we have uh, that are currently available for PyCentral. And we're continuing to, um, similar to the Ansible collection, we're continuing to work on the PyCentral and release a newer versions and adding more modules and more features um, to match uh, more of the customer use cases and workflows. And talking about workflows, uh, one of the co common asks we had from our customers was um, they wanted a template or workflows to understand the capabilities. Okay, how can they utilize PyCentral or uh, Central REST APIs in their automation scripts? And for that, we have the central Python workflows. This is a GitHub repository that hosts uh, common workflows uh, that customers can utilize uh, to automate uh, their networks with the help of Python. So we have some of the popular use cases like device provisioning and onboarding. So there's configuration for central WLAN devices. Uh, there are also workflows specific for uh, managed service providers who are heavy into automation. So for them, the customer onboarding, steps like that, and user and device management and migration. So these are some of the uh, workflows that we have as part of the central Python workflow. We'll be continuing to add and develop more workflows as we hear from the field and our customers. And you know, again, as is the GitHub, repository, um, you can, you know, reach out to us if you have any specific use cases that you think uh, would be a good fit for the Central Python workflows. So with that, um, I'll do a quick demo for uh, the PyCentral tool and the Central Python workflows. So we'll be doing a device onboarding script today here, but basically what we'll be doing with the script is the six steps that I have here, right? So we will move a couple of devices. Uh, so these devices are on GreenLake, but they are not assigned to any of the uh, applications. So we'll first assign these devices to the Aruba Central application. Once the devices are uh, assigned to Aruba Central, we'll provide subscriptions to devices, then We'll create, uh, so within central, then you will create the group and upload configurations to the group. So for uh, those who are not familiar, um, groups is a construct that we use in central for configuration. So when I'm uploading configurations to, to, uh, to the group, that's basically any device that is moved into this group will pick up that configuration. So that's the step five. So we move uh, devices to this group and the device that we're onboarding now has the valid configuration. Once the device are configured, the next step is mo usually monitoring. And for monitoring, we utilize sites. Uh, so sites are physical addresses in Central, so, and it's utilized for monitoring. And uh, so we'll be creating a site and associating these devices that we just moved to Central to the site in order to monitor them. This is the PyCentral script. It'll interact with Central with REST APIs and create a HackShack config and a HackShack site. Um, so with that, uh, we'll take a look at the uh, demo. All right, um, so before going into the demo, I'm gonna just quickly uh, just showcase the um, Aruba Central Ansible collection, right? Uh, so here we have the Ansible collection. We have um, the steps here for installation. So this is the Ansible Galax Galaxy platform where you can browse um, different Ansible collections. So here you have the installation steps. Um, you can also, we have links to the documentation. So you can go through this uh, to see how you can, you know, update your inventory file or how you can, you know, there's also an example playbook. So, you know, if it's the first time you're even using Ansible platform, you can come here, you know, make sure you have the correct, uh, you know, inventory file, copy this playbook, you know, make this call and you'll be able to, you know, make, uh, utilize Ansible, uh, the Ansible playbooks that we have. If you're, if you're interested to understand more of the details of the different modules that we have, you can go and see that here. All this documentation is available on Ansible Galaxy. And also in our Dev Hub, we also have our um, PyCentral uh, library. So if you go to uh, PyPy, which is the Python library repository, you can see the installation steps for PyCentral. 
Um, we have also documentation on how you can get started, right? Uh, getting you know, uh, getting the required things like the base URL, the access token, how you can input it to the central, uh, by central library so that the you can make these um, uh, automation scripts that are utilizing by central. We also have um, read the docs. So as I mentioned, the different modules that I showed you, um, there are specific functions. Um, if you're interested in a particular module, you want to understand how it works, you want to understand what is the required uh, parameters, you know, what is expected responses, and understand basically what the function does. We have uh, extra, like detailed documentation of this in read the docs uh, for PyCentral. And coming to our central Python workflows, so we have um, all the workflows that we have supported, as I mentioned, like device provisioning, onboarding, uh, MSP customer ordering. So many of the workflows, we also have a high level diagram for you to help you better understand what uh, the workflow does. And you can click on each workflow to you know get uh, details of what the workflow is, what are the required parameters. So as I mentioned today, I'll be doing the device onboarding workflow. So these are the steps that the script execute. Um, we'll see that we can, in the documentation, you have the prerequisites, you have the installation steps. And one thing I want to highlight is this particular script requires two things. One is a so central token file, which would have your base URL and access token. And then the second file it would require is the variables for the workflow. So that's basically details like the devices, the groups, the site details. And once you have all of this, you can run the Python device onboarding script to um, you know, uh, onboard the devices. It does look like my, uh, I've logged out of Central. Let me just quickly log back in to Green Lake. And For those that are saying, this is also how you could connect to the Rupa Central application uh, via your Green Lake portal. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Green Lake portal, uh, the Aruba Central application is, um, is an is an app at the end uh, in uh, the HP uh, Green Lake platform, right? So I'm right now logging in, and I should be able to see the different groups that are associated with my uh, users. So I'm going to this is the account that I want to go to. So this is the workspace uh, where the Aruba Central application is installed. So before running the script, um, I'm going to quickly show you uh, the inventory, right? So all the devices that are on GreenLake, so any of the devices, uh, if any of the application in GreenLake, if there are devices or subscriptions, then you can see them all at the, in this page. So here in this particular um, accounts inventory, you can see that there are four devices here that require uh, applications. And also I will quickly go to the Aruba Central application. And so this basically launches the Aruba Central application. Um, let me just make sure. So yeah, here um, I want to just showcase the groups, right? Uh, so we don't have any group called a hack shack group or hack shack site. So after we run the script, we should have those groups populated and all the device, the two devices that we are moving should also be moved in here. So let me just make sure I'm in the correct account. Okay. All right. So you're good to go. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so here I have my code editor here. Here uh, I basically cloned uh, the central Python workflows that I showed you earlier on GitHub. I cloned it. And since I'm running the device onboarding script, I made a few changes right uh, to the input files. So the central token file I showed you earlier that has the base URL, the access token, right? So I've already populated it with the token details. I'll show you the workflow variables file. So within this, I'm providing the details, right? I'm moving two devices, one switch and one AP. Um, I'm providing uh, the switch uh, serial number, MAC address, and the subscription uh, required, subscription type that needs to be assigned for this. Then as I mentioned, the Hatchet config group. So the group that I'm going to create, I'm providing all the details of the group here. These are all the attributes of the group. Here we have the templates. So this is a, a template group that I'm creating. So it requires uh, template files. So I'm specifying the the link to the template file here. So uh, this is basically the path. So we can see here, uh, this is basically the path. If I open it, you will see uh, 
a template that will be added to the group. And when devices are moved to this group, they will pick up that template. Finally, there is a site that we want to create. I'm providing the name at the address of the site. So with that, uh, I think we can run the script. So I'm just opening my terminal here and I'm going to the device onboarding folder. I do kind of, and I'm just setting my environment. So all the required, uh, you know, Python packages are available in this environment that I've created. And I then run the device onboarding script, right? So I have everything populated and good to go. So uh, that's basically, so I, I have added some print statements for us to, you know, keep track of what's happening. So first, first stage was basically assigning the devices to the central application. So that's successfully done. So we have the response code here, seeing the details of the device, um, and the device type. Second step was assigning the central subscription. That's successfully done. You can see the, uh, the license types and the, for both devices, we are creating the group and we uploaded the template files for both the groups. Finally, uh, then we moved the devices to the group and then the last two steps create the site and also setting the device to the site. So all the steps have been successfully completed. We have these 200. So in the API world, the 200 indicates success. And so we can actually now go to the UI right and verify this so basically what we have done here is in this case i want to do onboard two devices and i was able to successfully do that so if you remember earlier we had four devices that required uh, assignments and now we just have two because the two devices we did in the uh, onboarding script have now been assigned and subscribed and we can uh take a look at uh can quickly just refresh this page uh so i'm going to open the groups overview so this shows me the list of groups that are available in this account. And as you can see here, we have the Hackshy group and we should have two devices. So the CX switch and the IAP, both of them have now been uh, moved to this group. We can see the serial number, the MAC address, and we can also verify that, you know, the configuration we have added is available here, right? So let me go to the, go to config here. So this will open the configuration section of this group. So within, uh, so from the global context, we are jumping to the, a template group context. And here we can see for access uh, points, we have an IAP uh, template. So I can click on edit just to quickly see what the uh, template is. Uh, let's, see. Load. let's see, let me quickly see if this CX template. Okay, there we go. The CX, you can see the CX file, which I showed you earlier, and that has the template available here. And uh, so I'm not going to make any changes as um, looks good there. And then the other thing that we did was create the site. So we go to the sites overview. And we, here we see the list of sites that are available in this account. So we see the address and the devices. So we move two devices to the Hackshack site. So clicking on that would show us the two devices. And we can also go to the site itself from here. So from global context, we're now jumping to the site context. And we can see the details like the location. Uh, so this is basically the address we specified and we have one AP and one switch, right? So the onboarding step here is completed and basically whatever the script, uh, what we had defined the script to do, it was able to successfully execute as we saw with the uh, 200 responses. And so that's uh, that concludes the device onboarding demo. Uh, finally, uh, we have the essential automation studio. So. So uh, central, central Wi-Fi downloader uh, was this custom dashboard that was developed by our uh, WLAN PLM Aaron Scott that utilize, utilizes central APIs. So what we saw before was all these central APIs, uh, you know, the automation scripts or you know, testing central uh, APIs to make changes or fetch some details. But in this particular website, you can fetch, uh, use, utilize central APIs to, you know, populate and create a nice dashboard that you can utilize for you know, monitoring a configuration. And our team, automation team was able to create a Docker container based on the website to enable, um, enable customers to create their own custom dashboards. So this makes it extremely uh, easy for you to visualize the central deployments. And you can uh, download it uh, in the GitHub repo. It's available in the Aruba Central uh, GitHub. So whether you're starting with Swagger, uh, exploring APIs through the reference guide, Postman collections, or automation SDKs. All these tools provide flexibility and ad advantages uh, to streamline your uh, development process. So with that, I'll hand it to Alvin. 
uh, to go over some of our additional resources. Thank you very much, Karthik. Um, go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, we only have right. a couple minutes left, so we'll briefly go over this. Um, one more slide. <clears throat> Karthik went over the developer hub. He, put, he showed you where it's at. But for those of you that are new to that, uh, the Ruby Developer Hub is where it's a great place to get started. We have the API reference guides, as Karthik had shown. Uh, there are resources and guides with the frameworks and SDKs. With Code Exchange, you could actually uh, make use of some of the repos that we have on our GitHub, uh, not only our Aruba GitHub, but for those that are interested uh, in publishing your own code, uh, that's something that we can also have in our Code Exchange. So definitely let us know, and we can actually get that submitted and reviewed by our team. We also have the Airheads developer community link there. If you are familiar with Aruba, we have an Airheads forum, and one is specifically to our developer community. You can reach out to us as well as other subject matter experts. And we're going to have more and more videos and trainings in collaboration with HPE Hack Jack and such. Uh, next slide. Finally, as mentioned earlier with Mathieu, we have the Slack, uh, HP Dev external Slack channels that are available. There are channels specific to Aruba where my team as well as other subject matter experts can answer for central switching, uh, as well as the, the various other products that we have over there. Definitely join the workspace if you, if you have questions there too. You have several different ways to connect to us. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for your time. Um, we have a few more minutes left and been kind of answering questions as we go along. Uh, but we'll, we'll follow up with any more questions uh, after the session too. And on our last slide, uh, you, you might see a, a poll to uh, through Zoom. In addition to this, we also have a survey that is um, basically good feedback for our team when it comes to regards to different automation frameworks that are available. We have a PDL that you can reach out to us as well on the email. Uh, in, in this survey, uh, it, it's, it's optional, but we would definitely love to hear back from you what your level of expertise is with automation, if there is other, other information that you wanted to kind of go over. Obviously, this is just kind of the very base of some of the central automation that we have available. We're adding more and more um, we're adding more and more SDKs, more and more uh, walkthroughs, guides, et cetera, through our developer hub and our GitHub. And so uh, you know, we look forward to having more webinars and, and workshop sessions to, to kind of take it from here. With that, thank you very much. And I'll hand it over to Mathieu. Yeah, thank you, Alvin. I'd like to, uh, yeah, to, to, to thank you, uh, uh, you and, and Kartik as well for the, for the numerous of, uh, resources you are, you are to demo and, and show up. Uh, yeah, so we have we had a lot of questions in the, in, in the Q&A section, so um, you might find some answer and don't hesitate to show up yeah, to the to the Slack uh, workspace. We we can continue the discussion there. Uh, and um, I also like to uh, to to thank you for uh, attending to that uh, meetup. And um, so. This meetup is uh, recorded, so you're gonna have an access to uh, to the record and to the the slide um, on the HP Developer uh, uh, portal uh, on the GitHub page. And uh, on that, uh, I'd say uh, thank you for for joining us again uh, this week, and um, have a nice uh, rest of your day. Thank you, Alvin. Thank you, Kartik. Bye. Thank you.